So, Arch Linux has an installer now. And if I didn't know any better, I would have thought that it was an April Fool's joke. And actually, I didn't know any better. When I first saw the news, I literally passed it off as exactly that, an April Fool's joke, because the news landed on April 1st. And the Arch Linux developers, they are no stranger to April Fool's jokes, so, you know, like I said, I just, well, passed it off. But it's actually true. Arch Linux has an installer now. Now, to be fair, if you do want a really awesome April Fool's joke, you should definitely check out the one that I did recently. It was pretty cool. If I do say so myself, I'll put a card right about here. But you didn't come here for an April Fool's joke. You came here for information on the Arch Linux installer. So what I'm going to do is wipe this laptop right here, a ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 1, and I'm going to wipe the current distribution off of this machine and replace it with Arch Linux, and I'm going to use the new installer to do so. So let's dive right in. So when you boot up your Arch Linux installation media, this is the very first screen that you'll see. Now, if you didn't know any better, you wouldn't even be aware that there's an installer built in in the first place. So I'll clear the screen. And let's go ahead and run the new installer. And the command that we'll use to do that is Python. It's actually a Python script. Dash M. Arch install. And then guided. Just like that. I'll press enter. And on the very first prompt, it's asking us to set the keyboard layout. So you can just choose whatever one is appropriate for you. On my end, it's US. I'll press enter. And then this screen right here is asking us for the region from which it's going to download packages. I'm going to choose option number 51, in my case, for the United States. And now it's asking me for the disk that I would like to use for the installation. In my case, it's option number one. I know that because it's an NVMe hard drive. It's about a terabyte. And that's the closest match. Option number two is the installation media that I've booted from. So I'm going to choose option number one. And here it's giving me some partition options. I'm going to keep it simple. Option number one reads, format entire drive and set up a basic partition scheme. Sounds good to me. So that's the one that I'll go with. And this is pretty cool. It's asking me which type of file system I would like to set up for that particular drive. And I'm going to choose option number zero for ButterFS to keep it interesting. It's something that I wanted to mess around with anyway. And for the encryption password, I may as well. And I'll type it in again. And it does help if you type a matching password the second time. Let's try that again. And that's better. So for the host name, this is my studio laptop, so that's what I'll call it. And I'll type in the root password. And again. And now it's giving me the option to set up a standard user account. So I'm just going to use my first name for the username. Easy enough. And then the password for that user, I'll type that in now. And it's asking me if this user should be a sudo user. And it's my user, so I'm going to say yes for this prompt. Now I have an option to create additional user accounts, but I'm not going to do that. I'll just press enter to skip this one. And I do want to install a desktop environment. So I'm going to choose option zero for desktop. And it's giving me an option of which desktop environment I would like to go with. I'm going to go with GNOME, which is option number three. But of course, you could choose whatever one you like best on your end. For the video card, this machine does have an NVIDIA card. So I'm going to choose option number four. And I do intend on playing Steam games on this laptop, so I'm going to choose the proprietary driver. And you know what? I do want to test out Pipewire, so I'm going to say yes to this prompt right here. And I have the option to set up additional packages. 
So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'd like to add Firefox, Tmux, Git. I think that's good enough. I'm going to choose option number one for Network Manager. And then for the time zone, in my case, it's going to be US Eastern. And there we go. I'll press enter to launch the installer. It's counting down. That's pretty cool. So I'm just going to let this install. I'll fast forward through the rest of the process and I'll be right back. So at this point, it looks like the process is complete. It's given me the option to access the installation in case I want to perform any tweaks or anything like that. But I'm actually very excited to see whether or not this works. So I'm going to say no, actually. And that's promising. It's telling me that the installation completed without any errors. It's telling me that I can reboot. So that sounds pretty confident. I'm going to reboot right now. Let's see if this works. All right, so here I have Arch Linux installed and ready to go. And the first attempt at this actually failed. It might have had something to do with the fact that I might have entered something incorrectly when I set up the keyboard layout early in the installation. The only thing I did different the second time was rather than typing US, I typed the number that was associated with US, and now it seems to be working. As you can see, GNOME is working. And if I go up here, I can click on Wi-Fi, I can select my network, so it's even detecting my wireless networks. So everything looks good. It looks like the guided installation is a wonderful addition to the Arch Linux installation media. So overall, the new installer was a success. I was able to get Arch Linux installed very quickly. And you know what? You can't ask for more than that. I did have a little problem the first time I ran it. After it was done installing, it would just reboot after it booted up, which was weird. And I think that was my fault, so I'm not going to criticize the installer for that. I just probably typed in something incorrectly. I think it was the language or the keyboard layout at the beginning. I typed in US instead of the number that goes for that keyboard type. So after I reran the installer, it was totally fine. I think the installer does the job that it was designed to do. I'm really happy that the Arch Linux developers have included it on the ISO. I think that's a great thing. And even though I do have a video on this channel that goes over the installation process in detail, a lot of you out there are probably thinking, is that video now irrelevant? Well, I don't think so. Part of the charm of Arch Linux is doing things yourself. The installer that they include on the ISO that's a great thing for those of you that want an installation and you want that installation to be set up quickly and easily. It'll definitely do that. But the video that I have on my channel, I still feel that it's a good fit for anyone that wants to set up an Arch Linux installation and they want to do it the manual way. And the benefit of the manual way is you get to learn a lot more about how a system is set up. Also, you can make even more decisions about how it's set up beyond what the installer gives you. So you can still set up Arch Linux the manual way or with the new installer. I think it's one more option, one more tool at your disposal, and that's a great thing. So definitely check out the installer that's now available in the Arch Linux installation media. I think it's pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you click that like button, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.